All right, everyone. Hello and welcome to another elevator parts video. In this video, we are going to be wiring some Schindler HT buttons. Now this one here on the left is already wired and we're going to be wiring this HT button here on the right. So this one's going to require a little bit more kind of creativity when it comes to wiring it because this button has this big old circuit board on the back and we want it to work without the circuit board. So that's going to be the goal of this video is I'm going to show you how to take the circuit board off and kind of how you can build your own circuit to make it light up. So if we take a closer look here at this button, we can see we've all seen this fixture design before. You have the little button and it makes that clicky sound. We've got this, the key switch down here, which in an event of a fire, you would place your key in and turn it to the on, which would recall the elevator down to the uh, lobby, or at least with the floor that this is on. And then when you're done, you would simply turn it to reset and then off. So if we turn these buttons over, we can kind of see what we're gonna do with this project. The one on the left is the button I've already worked with. I've taken the circuit board off and I put on my own micro switch and put an LED where the normal LEDs on the circuit board would be. So it pretty much works just like the normal button would, except it just is a little different. So you see it presses down on the little micro switch and there's just simply an LED that goes over the little opening instead of the actual LEDs on the board. For the key switch down here, you can pretty much all I've done is made it when you turn on the key, it just lights up the light. So it does that the similar way the button would, it just kind of the current goes through the switch instead of through the button. Now on this button, there's something a little bit different. If we take a closer look at the key switch here, you can see there's another circuit board right on the base. And if we look at this button, you see there is no circuit board, but there's a little hole right there. So what that little hole is, is it's actually a little light. And this is the board for the light. On the front, there'll be a little red light that turns on when the fire service is enabled. So we're gonna make this key switch light up the little red light. Now, if you're wanting to build this yourself, um, there are a few things you might wanna know about this project because it, we are custom making some things and it's not just as simple as shoving some wires in there. We're gonna have to get a little creative since we're not actually using a circuit board or any sort of, you know, any electronics of any sort. So the first thing you're gonna really need to know for this project, if you know how to solder, you can, you'll need to be able to solder, but if, if you can maybe get someone to help you with it if you don't know how, because you will need to solder some LEDs together uh, and uh, some on the switches if you don't know how to. Now, if you if you don't know how to solder and you don't have access to one, you don't know, you just think, oh, this is not this is not possible. Maybe this project uh, isn't isn't right for you. I mean, this is going to require a little bit of uh, custom making here. But if you are going to uh, continue working on this project, you will need a few things. Essentially, we need an LED, a switch, and a battery pack. So your LED, this is a three volt green LED. And let's say you decide to use a nine volt, then instead of using a AA battery pack, you would want to use a nine volt battery. So your, your power supply needs to match the voltage of your LED. In this case, we're going three volts. Now your switch, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just need a little micro switch. You can pick these up real cheap online. And if you want to have that HT feeling, you want to get one that has that's a micro switch and it clicks. Because when we put it back there, you'll press it and it'll feel just like a normal HT button. Now, once you've acquired all the parts that you need, we're gonna go ahead and get started with disassembling the original elevator part. Now, if your part has the circuit board attached to the back, we're gonna to wanna to take that off. And also make sure we leave the key switch on because we are gonna use that. All right, so once you remove the board, you can see this is what the button looks like underneath. Now, if you had one with the down button, this is where your down button would be. You can see there's no down button on this, so it's just a little opening right there. There's not even a hole in it. But for the button that you have, you'll notice there's the opening for where the light would go through, and then this little plastic piece which pushes up on the, uh, the button, which we don't have anything here right now, which we're gonna add something. Another thing you're gonna want is if you do have the little screw, you're gonna wanna save one screw because we're gonna tighten this down to hold this plastic piece in place. So now we've taken the board off, let's go down and see how we're going to actually build the circuit on here. All right, next we're going to add the little micro switch. Now one thing you wanna note is you wanna note what the pins are. So you can see there's C, NO, and NC. So this stands for common, this is naturally open, and NC is naturally closed. That's pretty much what they are. C is common, so this is common to both of these. And here's a diagram up on the screen to kind of explain what, what's actually going on here. 
So naturally open is naturally open. So the contact here is not touching this pin right here. So C and NO are not touching right now. Now, if you also notice, if you look at NC, that stands for naturally closed. And naturally closed, well, is exactly what it is. It's closed. So right now, a current would flow from C to NC. Now, if we press down on the switch, you'll notice things change. The NO now, be now becomes closed to the C, and C to NC is now open. So it's pretty simple how the switch works, and what we're gonna be focusing on is the C and the NO. Those are the two you wanna make sure you know where they are. If we take a closer look at the actual button, you'll notice there's this little ledge on the side, and now this works great for what we're going to do, because we can actually glue the switch right here on that ledge, so when we press the button in, it presses down on that switch. I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to place a little bit of glue on the switch just like so and then I'm just going to place it on in a spot where when I press down it presses down on the switch. Once it dries you'll see when I press down on the button it clicks just like an HT button. All right, for the next part of this little construction here, you're going to want to plug in your soldering. Now, this is where we're going to solder some things to our button. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and just take care of the battery pack. Now, obviously, we have the red wire is positive and the black wire is negative. Another important thing to note is your LED. Now, what you're going to want to look for on the LED is the shorter pin, and there's also a flat side to the LED. So if you can see the flat side right there. That is the negative end of the LED. Usually, and you can see also here we have the long pin for positive, the short pin for negative. That play, that is important, so make sure you can uh, can figure out which what the polarity of your LED is. So what you're going to want to do is on your switch, you're going to want to locate the common pin, which hopefully you did that earlier. And you're going to take your red wire from your battery pack, and you're going to just wrap it around there, and you're going to solder this wire to that pin. All right, now once you've soldered your red wire to your common pin, the next thing you're going to do is get your LED. And what, we're, what we can do here is we can, we can lay our LED over the opening and bend the two sides down so we can simply lay the LED over the top. To, once you've bent the pins on the LED, again, you want to note which side is positive and negative, and you can do that by finding the flat side. The negative is the flat side, and we're going to lay this over the top right here. If you look closely, the one pin will line up perfectly with the naturally open pin on the switch. So we can directly solder right to the switch from the LED. So you can see here we have soldered the positive to the naturally open pin on our switch. Now the next thing we need to do is attach the negative wire to our negative end of the LED. And we're going to basically do the same thing. Alright, so once you've soldered on the other ba uh, battery connector, you can see if you want to glue the other end on, you can. It's probably a good idea. Um, but I just want to show you that it works. So all you need to do is put some batteries into your connectors and simply give your button a press and you will see it lights up just like that. So now that we've got the light working on the button, let's take a look at the key switch. Now this is going to, what you do with the key switch is going to kind of determine on what you want and what you have available. So on my key switch, we've got the little light that turns on when you turn on the fire service. And now what I want to do is make it whenever I turn the key to on, that lights up. So first thing we have to do is figure out what each of these wires do. So if you have just the key switch, you'll have three wires, the black, the red, and the orange. Now the black wire is the common wire. This is going to be what we hook up to our positive on our battery. The red wire is the output for when you turn it on to fire service. Now when you turn the key to reset or bypass, whatever that one says, that's going through the orange wire. Now if you have this little circuit board, there'll be two wires. You'll have the purple wire and the red wire. The purple wire is the negative and the red wire is the positive. So let's say you don't have the little red light. How are you going to wire this up? Now what you would want to do is you, just depending on what you want the key switch to do, you would connect your black wire, 
your common to the red to the to the same pin as your positive of your battery pack. If you want it to only light up when you turn the fire service to on, you will take the red wire and put it to your NO pin on your switch. If you want both positions of the key switch to light it up, you would connect these two together and put that on your NO pin on your switch. Now in my case, I want it where when I turn the fire service to on, it turns on the little red light on this, the key switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the red and orange wires together just by twisting them together a little bit. So now that, now that I've attached these wires together, what I'm gonna wanna do is take the red wire from the lights, because this is our positive side, and we're gonna connect that to these two wires. And we're gonna tighten those together. Now another thing that you might want to do is just add a small little wire nut to this, which covers the wires so you can't short it out or anything. Now if you don't have a wire nut, you can simply wrap it in electrical tape. 